Hey everybody, my name is the Magyar Geologist, and today we are learning about Icelandic volcanoes, specifically Trinnökagegur. Trinnökagegur is at the Hafnarfjörður Iceland at the Reykjanes Peninsula near the capital of Reykjavik. It is a super interesting volcano. I don't know about my pronunciation. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Icelandic is a very hard language. Uh, this volcano is the result of a dike intrusion and is considered a monogenetic system. It is part of the Brennensteinfjöll fissure swarm. The volcano allows for a unique view of a monogenetic plumbing system, aka things are exposed within the volcano, not outside the volcano. It formed about 3,500 BP from a Strombolian eruption, which is a which was dike fed. Um, so let's go over some of those words that I used in there, not the Icelandic ones. Let's talk about a monogenetic system. A monogenetic system is a volcanic system. Essentially what you have is a whole bunch of singularly made volcanoes. A lot of times these are called volcanic swarms. You'll also hear it being called a volcanic center. Basically what's happened is you had an eruption here and then you had an eruption here that made a new volcano and an eruption here that made a new volcano and it essentially moves. Uh, and that really has to do with the fact that the plate is moving, not necessarily that the magma is moving from hotspot to hotspot. Uh, we have a pretty obvious one over, I've talked about previously, the San Rafael Volcanic Field. And we're also going to talk about the San Francisco Volcanic Field, which is on the southern side of the Colorado Plateau in Arizona. But this one is in Iceland. And Iceland's super duper interesting. We're going to do another video that's entirely about uh, Icelandic volcanism, period, and kind of try to scratch the surface on that because it's very it's a very interesting system. What's going on in Iceland is you have a spreading center because it is where the mid-ocean ridge is coming up on land. On top of it, you have hot spots, you have all these cool things happening, and there's a lot of basaltic volcanism happening, but you also get some more explosive volcanism. You have glaciers on top of volcanoes, which cause some cool stuff. So there's a lot of really interesting things there, and that's why a lot of scientists, or especially geoscientists, like to study it. But this particular volcano is really cool because we're able to see what's going on inside of it versus dealing with noticing things outside of it or after everything has eroded away. So it gives this really unique view. So let's talk about basaltic eruptions. Generally, they are pretty calm. Like most of the time we think of basaltic eruptions, we think of Hawaiian style or lava fountaining, which are also really cool. Totally, totally, totally think those things are awesome. We had Strombolian, uh, we had Hawaiian style or lava fountaining occurring over at La Palma, and we have it happening over in Hawaii, hence the name. Um, but Strombolian eruptions can occur due to large amounts of gas, pressure with the system, or if there's some sort of evolution of the magma, or even if everything gets really, I don't know, tight. Each volcanic system, heck, each eruption even, is unique. So after the eruption that happened here, which was Strombolian, and Strombolian, I'll put a we're gonna have a little icon back here that shows what a Strombolian eruption looks like because they're really cool. What seems to have happened is the magma, instead of hardening and cooling in the magma chamber, retreated back into the system, which left something bare, the conduit. So a conduit is what feeds the magma into the system. Depending on what uh, documentation you look at or, or really graph you look at, sometimes they call this the volcanic neck, but basically it's what leads the magma from the magma chamber into the volcano itself, where it then comes out through an eruption of some sort. Uh, these are generally rounded cylindrical uh, type formations, and generally speaking, these are filled. They're hardened, filled. Uh, it's not very often that we get to see a system where the conduit's empty. On top of this, a cave was exposed with stacked lava flows and, other, and another buried cinder cone within it, which is cool. Uh, the tephras from the cinder cone were absorbed into the magma, allowing it to become more evolved, evolved meaning there was probably an increased amount of silica, uh, possibly other elements such as potassium or calcium, uh, which caused the cave formation to occur in the area where the cone was. The volcano itself had cannibalized basaltic crust and this buried cinder cone, which led to some very interesting minerals, which have different shapes and compositions. Uh, basaltic cannibalism is actually something that doesn't happen often, and this is because melting basalt takes higher temperatures than other materials. And since they run at, at such high temperatures, uh, it's kind of hard to go and melt them again. You'd have to have something hotter than that or equally as hot coming in and kind of making melts form. Uh, 
Uh, this is why when you have silicic magma, it doesn't melt previously made basaltic magma because silicic magma forms at a cooler temperature. The name of this volcano does have a translation. So, Trinukagagar <laughs> translates to Three Peaks Crater. And the reason for this is because the volcano is made up of three craters or three cinder cones that were created by the about 4,000 year old Stromboli eruption. The region this volcano formed in, which is I, Iceland, is located on top of the mid-ocean ridge and is so a rift zone. The volcano itself is actually part of the rift zone, which is really, really cool. And there is new crust being formed here. The big question, is this volcano still active? Why am I asking this? There's all these volcanoes all over Iceland that are in fact active. Right? So why wouldn't this one be active? And the, reason, the reason for this question is because there is actually a tour that goes inside of this volcano. And we're going to get to that because it is fantastically cool. Um, I think I would go if I ever got the chance. If I could afford it, I would definitely go on this tour. And only because, technically, this volcano is no longer considered active. It is, in fact, considered dormant. Currently, there is no activity happening. There is no uh, heating. We don't see that there's any um, hydrothermal activity. There's no hot springs. We don't have fumaroles. Basically, everything's asleep. The cave system formed by the magma evacuating the conduit and cannibalizing some of the previously made cone. And the whole system itself was actually found by a spelunker by the name of Arnie B. Stephenson. And they actually worked really hard to make sure that people could go and see this volcano. Like, they were actively working to do this because they felt it was really, really unique and important that people could see. Uh, so the answer to this question is it is, in fact, dormant. There hasn't been any sort of activity currently happening. It has erupted within the last 10,000 years, though, so technically it has the potential to erupt again. However, we don't know if it will or when it will. There isn't a ton of information on this volcano out there other than two abstracts I found and some information on travel websites, which is really interesting. Um, I did find some information from geothermal papers, and I believe there was a thesis from Uppsala University, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but there isn't really like super huge amount of information like other volcanoes. This is one of those volcanoes that hasn't surprisingly been as studied, at least that I could find. And if there are more papers, they were locked behind something and I couldn't find them, or they I wasn't able to access anything else other than their abstracts. But in that case, I still would use the abstract in some way, shape, or form. Um, the whole swarm, like, or the whole region, not just this particular volcano, has had its last eruption in 1341 CE, and it was a VEI-2, and it was the Grefelder Crater. The region has some impressive lava flows, and I'm actually going to show that in a second. It's really, really pretty. Um, so the region itself, like the whole region itself, can be technically active, but the dike swarm is not active at this volcano at this time, just in other parts of the region. Remember, this is a monogenetic region where you're going to have an eruption here, an eruption here, an eruption here, and it's going to move. Now, granted, another eruption can happen next to it, but it's not necessarily likely that you, the eruption will happen again at this volcano. There is a geothermal paper out there saying that the... Brennenstein's fuel, fuel field is possibly a geothermal site that could create renewable energy since there is partially a molten body beneath the surface here. However, a thesis from Uppsala University stated that there's no obvious geothermal manifestations, but there is only but there that there is hydrothermal activity at depth, and it's mostly fluid circulation, uh, but nothing is being visibly seen at the surface. So this region seems to be dormant-ish. Uh, so is there an immediate risk? Probably not. Should you still be cautious? Oh, yes. Uh, but look at this place. It's absolutely gorgeous. There are so many colors due to the minerals and the cool magmas that cover the walls. Uh, the volcano itself is part of a country park nearby the capital where they had a recent eruption, but this was southwest of the capital and this is southeast and it was not part of the same field. So just because... Had fish eruptions doesn't mean this area would too. So there is a tour for this volcano, and you go in mostly northeasterly of the three peaks. Uh, the crater is about 12 by 12 feet or 4 by 4 meters wide and is a a, a like a it is a, a, a shaped opening that's kind of circular. 
Uh, the entrance is 120 meters or 300 feet deep, and then there are a bunch of passages inside your tour, and the total is about 200 meters or 700 feet deep. You get to take a tour. Oh, sorry. It's, it's like a bell shape. It's like a bell shaped opening. Uh, you get to take a tour of the magma chamber, which is apparently big enough for the Statue of Liberty, which is super awesome. And the width of it is about three full size basketball courts. So that's just wow. Apparently, it takes about six minutes to get all the way to the bottom via a transport they use. And you do have to wear proper attire, hiking shoes, pants. It's cold in there. So a sweater or five in my case, a hard hat with a light. The proper minor you'll be, um, and it is a full day excursion, and it's an 18 person max group. The tour offers traditional Icelandic meat or veggie stews, which is cool. So I did look into this tour. It does seem awesome. They do seem very interested on keeping their the people who are visiting safe. Um, but again, remember, this is still a dormant volcano, so you should be careful. Don't go in if there's going to if people have mentioned that there's activity going on nearby. And by nearby, I mean like part of that field in general. But overall, I look forward to reading more about this volcano as I see more information come out. I have not seen much about this volcano. And again, if you have papers or I have found papers about this volcano, please send them to me. I want to see them. Otherwise, have a fantastic day and I will see you guys next time. Remember to stay safe out there and live long and prosper. Bye!